And there's actually a back and forth between him and the authors in a number of academic journals showing that they are aware of this error and still they refuse to correct for it in their study. Um, and, and so not only that, I mean, you could attribute that if, if that hadn't happened, if there hadn't been the discussion in those studies, you might attribute that just to an accident. Somebody, it, you know, really didn't earn his PhD or something like that. But another researcher at Fresno State University went back and looked at every single study on this same topic back to 2009. I think that's 20 studies that I counted in his table. And he found that every single one of them made the same error, which as in the video clip you had um, from Dr. Sellens, it pointed out that, you know, that's standard scientific control. It should have been done because it's completely logically and scientifically uh, unserious to publish those kinds of study findings without that control. No, definitely. And do you think this also, as you kind of hint at in your article as well, that it kind of goes back to this issue when we talk about trust the science and trust the experts on this, there's a major replication crisis that, you know, the left especially, they love to like whip out their studies and beat us over the head with it. But a lot of those studies, if you were to retest them, as you were saying, uh, some of these other scientists have, you don't get the same conclusions. You don't always get the same results. So is that a, a major issue plaguing some of these social sciences as well? Oh, it's a major issue across all of uh, scientific research today. You know, it's been found you know, in medical research, uh, but the worst uh, offender, according to researchers themselves, is social sciences. And that's partly because of the lack of hard data and the ability, ability to man manipulate the outcomes, just basing, uh, you know, and such as in this case, uh, what things you choose to include and what things you don't choose to include. Um, but I think it's really so I mean, so it's really true that the fact that we're told all the time that we have to have this public funding for research that we, you know, want to save people's lives, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, everybody agrees with, you know, scientific research on cancer or something. But the vast majority of what's being funded with our taxpayer dollars and institutions is honestly junk science, very much like these studies, and they are used to push political agendas. So what we see actually here, you know, Dr. Sellens pointed out that the studies actually pushed a conclusion that the, and the reality was the exact opposite. We now have almost half this, I mean, half the states in the nation have banned people from seeking help for their struggles with sexuality issues or complicated that. Literally, it's, we're not talking about force, we're talking about people willingly going to therapists for issues they identify themselves and trying to resolve, you know, those feelings, the conflicted feelings that they have. Zero pressure, all client, you know, led, all good therapists do that. And so, and, and his, what he found actually was that these bans based on this junk science are actually more likely to increase the suicidal risks for people who identify as LGBT. So that's completely unacceptable, you know, to treat our fellow Americans in that way and to use them as these talking points rather than considering the real harms of junk science include, you know, people being depressed and sad and not getting help that they really need because the government stepped in the way between them and a therapist. You know, and it really is so horrific. And as you talk about in your articles, well, I think the Supreme Court, uh, they were asked to hear a case that was, was concerning some of these bans, but decided not to. Can you talk to us about that case and even some of the Republican appointed justices who decided against hearing it? That's right. I mean, it is a clear First Amendment violation to ban people from privately talking to a therapist about honestly anything they want, right? The First Amendment protects speech. Um, it, it is a very, very uh, open protection for speech. It absolutely covers the things people would say in therapy. People should be able to freely discuss in public and in private all of their ideas. They're not a direct and immediate incitement to violence. You know, that's the First Amendment standard. And it's been stripped away from Americans in these 26 states, some of the neediest people that we have in our country. Um, there's a lot of coexisting traumas with uh, children who identify as LGBT. We have these gender contagions going on, you know, where therapists are able to rush little children into amputating healthy body parts um, without looking at the fact that most of these children have comor what's called comorbidities. They have pre-existing traumas and struggles that are amplifying their gender distress, and it's being expressed as transgender ideation, as gender confusion. But, you know, instead of being allowed to explore that, to resolve those traumas in a safe and loving environment with someone who's trained with those sorts of things, and can, instead, you know, we're turning these kids, um, and we're, we're chopping them up, you know, with so-called surgeons. It's, it's really a human rights atrocity. And our Supreme Court has enabled that by being afraid to talk about these issues that really should be very obvious.